This is the messiest kitchen I've ever seen. You call it a kitchen. I call it a rooming house for rodents. Who's running this kitchen anyhow? The mice or the pack rats? Bacteria, vermin, clutter, and hidden hazards. It's a case for the Kitchen Crimes Unit. They gather evidence, identify suspects, and with $5,000, fix the kitchen to prevent future crime. Mom, well, maybe I'll just make the dressing room. Way too much water. Meet Carla and Craig. Oh, and their three daughters, all vying for space in a kitchen that's clutter central. And every now and then, tempers flare. Maybe three people weren't trying to do one thing. This is the meeting point at which we all collide. Heather, can you move? I need a knife. It's just, this is what it's all about. Bottlenecks in here and we all sort of squeeze through and get wherever we're going. You can't even eat in here because if you sit over there you have to push the table out. If you sit here, you're in the way of people <laughs> coming through. At Christmas it's clear, you know. We have the debate all the time. I like things on the table and he likes it completely clear, but... It gets to the point. I mean, if you don't have room to put away the dishes that are in the sink, then there's something wrong here. I still like clutter. <laughs> can tell where my go. They leave lots of evidence. <laughs> One winter, we'd open the door and, and they'd run out. I would just leave the house and not come back until the rest of the family came home. <laughs> I tried to catch one in the stove once. Okay. The light was on in the stove, and I noticed this mouse go down I inside. I think it's a different it. stove, though. We've it, had it the, yeah. been played with them for a few years. Somebody want to wash down a cutting board for me? But unfortunately, the last couple winters they've been pretty bad. I guess they feel quite comfortable in here already. They figure this is their home mm -hmm. or whatever, so it'd be very nice to get rid of them. The Kitchen Crimes Unit is on the case. Oh my! This is overwhelming. You know, this is precisely the environment that bacteria, viruses, parasites, they love to live in an environment like this. And guess what? When you have harborage like this, rodents. Unbelievable. Well, the gloves are going on. I just hope I have the right equipment. Nothing a trash bag won't fix. Interior designer Marina Hildebrand will analyze the kitchen layout, while health inspector Rob Mancini gathers evidence of hidden dangers. Take a look at this dishwasher. What are you thinking? Spoons in a plastic bag in the dishwasher? That doesn't seem right to me. The island is just much too large for this room. This thing is huge. It's makeshift, and aside from that, it's acting as storage. Look at this. This little pathway is covered in stuff. Can you get in from over Let's there? See? No, you've got to be kidding me. Can't wait to see what I find in the lab. No, I'll take a look at this. Big crack in here. What is that? A hole in the side of the microwave? Oh, like the plastic's been burnt right through. Wow. Lovely. Now, believe it or not, all the radiation is actually housed in this metal casing right here. And the only thing protecting you from radiation is this door, this metal grating. So I'm going to turn it on and see whether or not we have any radiation leaking out here. It falls in the safe zone. But. We still have a crack in the microwave. The hinges are really loose. This is actually destined for the garbage, not to be on your counter. The mice have taken over the area where the pots and pans should be stored. Literally, it's everywhere. Mice droppings are everywhere here. 
Now, with mice droppings, you don't know whether or not they contain hantavirus, a deadly respiratory disease that you can get. If a mouse was infected, and in Canada, it's quite common, they could shed it in their droppings, urine, or saliva. completely packed with mice droppings. But look at all the food the mice have back there. It's like a little smorgasbord. Unbelievable. <laughs> Dead mouse. You know, I think this is the most disgusting thing I've seen in a kitchen yet. In my opinion, this family is heavily at risk for contracting hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. Just from the amount of mice droppings in their cupboards, this is a real, real health risk. I really wanna know how they're thinking and how they can actually operate in a kitchen like this. We're definitely gonna need some help to analyze what's going on here. Yeah, I agree. Next, prosecuting the unwelcome trespassers. Carla and Craig are facing tough allegations about their kitchen. Bacteria everywhere, broken appliances, and clutter creating a perfect hideout for mice, alive and dead. What do you think poses the greatest health risk in this kitchen? I would say the, the mouse problem. And we've really tried to reduce, like, leaving food out and stuff, but they find their way in anyway, so. Even crumbs in the to toaster here. Yeah. They like the toaster, and it just irks me that we don't see them, yeah. but there's evidence that they've been on the counters, and ugh, it just drives me crazy, so. How long have the mice droppings been around in your kitchen? We really, just, this spring we didn't get in and, and, yeah. and work at and it. We, we don't... Out of sight, out of mind, like we don't... We're not using those we cupboards don't at all. Use them. Any of the stuff that was, you know, that is wrapped up, I and mean, we don't even want to look at it. We don't want to open those doors. We, we figure we could you know, probably live without it. It's more of a time capsule. Mind. Those cupboards haven't been used for, let's say, a years. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> it's like the buzzard. <laughs> we brought in a special guest today. He's a behavioral therapist who helps people conquer their clutter. This is Dr. Toby, our kitchen profiler. Hi, folks. Hi. Interesting place you have here. Each of these things has a memory, an yeah. event, yeah. a symbolic importance to it. Some of it's my sister's pottery mm -hmm. up there, and some of them are I my see. hedgehogs. And One of the uh, consequences of having this much stuff on display is it interferes with function. And we do like nice things, it's just that we've, they've sort of, you know, become over crowded. I mean, there's all kinds of things in here that I, would, yeah, I wouldn't care less if it was here or not here. Mm -hmm. And do you know which things she cares about? Well, if I made a suggestion to move that, I would hear about it. <laughs> I see. So you're reluctant to offer some concrete suggestion lest she think that maybe you're being critical or yeah. don't like her stuff. Yeah. Don't just say, I hate this, because yeah, right. that's not nice. But if you say, why are you mm -hmm. hanging on to this, mm -hmm. then I can maybe say, that's not something we really need in here, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. It's important to, to make a decision, to take some of the things that are on display mm -hmm. and remove them from sure. display and Absolutely. have a display area mm -hmm. that doesn't impinge on the functional area. Right. One of the yeah. reasons that we think that the kitchen is the, is the heart of the home is because this is where we eat together and we, and we That's share. That's right. Absolutely. And sometimes we forget that oh. when we become bit characters to the props. <laughs> That's right. That's where I'm gonna jump in and help you with some real life solutions. We're gonna go back to the lab and we're gonna come back with all the results that we found in this kitchen. Oh. This has been good. Yeah? This has been good. You're okay. You I'm, I'm coming realize to that some we've got too much stuff, yeah. <laughs> You're this color of your shirt, huh? I know. <laughs> and I'm just so embarrassed.
Rob's germ swabs will reveal the kind of harmful bacteria lurking in the clutter of Carla and Craig's kitchen. You wanna come take a look at this? So we've actually isolated Enterobacter in the right kitchen sink. We can't typically see this in the sink. No, no, it needs time to grow, it needs the right temperature to grow, and this is what we have. <laughs> Perfectly disgusting. Can you see how slimy that is, how mucoid it is? Under powerful magnification, this little guy has hairs all around its cell surface. Now that's actually called flagella. That's what gives it the ability to move from one place to another. This bacteria actually causes respiratory tract infections, urinary tract infections, that's something you really don't want in your kitchen sink, especially if you're doing dishes there. This is a great shot of the overview of the kitchen. Look at that tiny little path that they have to make their way by the counter, around the makeshift island to the back of the house. It's really narrow. The clutter has taken over. You notice they're preparing food? on that island, but they have that little space. It's not much at all to work with. The mice have triggered a domino effect. How so? All the things that were stored in the bottom cupboards are now being stored on the countertop. So their counter space is used as their storage area. This is a problem. How do you like that? I wonder if she's checking the toaster for mouse droppings. No plate. She's buttering the toast right on the counter, right beside the microwave where we found a pile of mice droppings. She could be ingesting whatever germs are on the counter. But I'm also worried about someone breathing in airborne dust from mice droppings. That's how people pick up hantavirus. And it's not just in mice droppings, it's also in their urine and saliva. Any contact could potentially transmit this virus. Next, delivering the verdict. Carla and Craig are under investigation for the following kitchen crimes. Aiding and abetting germs, appliance abuse, obstruction of workspace, and harboring illegal aliens. Oh. Got the results from the lab. We isolated a bacteria called Enterobacter agglomerans. It produces this white slimy layer. We actually isolated it from your sink. So if you're doing dishes in your sink, without properly sanitizing, you're getting all this bacteria and everything in your sink, onto your plates, onto your food. If you have, uh, give it a chance to multiply and grow, you can get food poisoning. Should we go to the doctor? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> okay. This leads me into something that uh, honestly frightened me when I came into your kitchen. The amount of mice droppings. It makes us sick too. Have you looked behind the microwave recently? There was a pile of mice droppings behind the microwave, which means they're on the counter Absolutely. and they're dispersed everywhere throughout your cupboards. You can actually get a very deadly viral disease called hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. When you think about it, you have fecal matter on your counters. This is where you prepare food. Now, even if the droppings didn't contain the virus, let's talk about bacteria. Salmonella, Leptospira, fecal coliform bacteria. If this gets into your food source, especially the salmonella, you can get food poisoning. It's not good to have the fecal matter on the counter, it's not good to have it anywhere. So it's very dangerous. It's all very scary. Yeah. <laughs> all the things that happen that you don't see. <laughs> Makes me sick. sick. I told you it was so gross. Now listen, I know we've scared you, but honestly, we do have a solution for all these problems. Okay. Marina? So, what I found in my analysis of your kitchen is that the mice are taking over. And it's creating this domino effect. Not using the storage area means we've got stuff out on our cupboards everywhere. And now the cupboard space wasn't enough, so we implemented this great island, which was good for a while, but then stuff ends up on it. 
And so the problem just keeps moving, and I really think that your kitchen can function much better. That's what I'm prepared to help you with. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you guys, kiss this baby goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> With $5,000, this kitchen rehabilitation starts with getting rid of the mice and their droppings. So we're going to bleach it down with a little bit of bleach and water. If the virus was in the mice droppings, this is what's going to kill the virus. At home, I always tell the homeowner, use a damp wiping cloth. But we're professionals, we've got the special precautions, and we have a special vacuum cleaner. Brand new dishwasher. There's this gigantic hole in the cover. And he's going to fill it with some expanding foam. We have to realize that mice can actually fit through a hole the size of a dime. So we're going to make sure we have a proper seal. Their storage in the uh, dishwasher. Mm -hmm. It's actually being stored properly now. Okay. It's not going to leak any radiation. Simple as that. Next, Ooh, nice. the crime free yeah. kitchen. Bacteria slime in the sink, broken down appliances, clutter chaos and a population explosion of mice. For kitchen crime fighters Robin Marina, it's all in a day's work. Oh, this is so cool. Very nice. I love my counter. Look at these, they slide out. Oh, I love those things. What's missing here? Well, Mice. No mice. Uh, no mice. If you see mice droppings, don't neglect them. It's a very serious health hazard. So if you do see some mice droppings, this is what you need to do. This is bleach and water. It's about one cup of water, two drops of bleach. Put on a pair of gloves, dampen the mice droppings, let the solution rest for about 10 minutes. Right. Okay? Dampen your cloth and physically remove the droppings. That way, you're not only getting the droppings, you're getting the urine and saliva that may be present there as well. Okay. So we sealed up all the cracks and crevices and holes to prevent their entry, but they're like humans, they want to eat. Right. So you got to make sure your food is properly stored. Marina's going to discuss that. Okay, well, food storage. We've made sure that a lot of them are stored in airtight, Mouse-proof containers. Oh! <gasps> wow! All the organization. And we've installed a new microwave. Oh, wow. That is unbelievable. Microwave. It's a microwave oh, and a vent. Microwave. There's no cracks. Mm -hmm. No more possible radiation. Yes. Yes. You want to get rid of bacteria in your sink. One cup of water, two drops of bleach. You want to spray. You want to leave it for a couple of minutes. And then rinse away. That's what's going to get rid of your bacteria. We did edit and remove some of the plates that you weren't using. With your new dishwasher, it's going to be easier to wash them. Put them away when you're done. No you don't need storage in the dishwasher. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now let's take a look at the island. This island is a much better scale. Right, absolutely. Um, it's still fairly large, but you know, there can be lots of people at different stations here in the kitchen. Right. Somebody cooking, somebody over here preparing, somebody grabbing something from the fridge, and a couple people chowing down. Right. Okay. Right. And I get that's really important. I think you guys are this great creative family who like to spend time together and the whole idea was to spend some more time together in the kitchen. Okay? That's right. Mm -hmm. There's this little thing that I like to call designer SOS that includes storage and then organization and finally scale. Yeah. Those are the important elements in this kitchen. Who thought I was a little mean? when I gave the results. Oh, not, not mean. mean. Not mean. <laughs> <laughs> so 
scary to know the truth and it's just great. Oh, Everything is just so good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.